we are living in the age of online social networking, of technology. We are living in a culture of connectedness, or so we think. American college students spend, on average, three hours texting and an hour and 40 minutes on Facebook every day. The amount of time we spend online is increasing and the amount off is decreasing. Online social networks can be extremely useful tools. They can bond people over long distances, they can be places where we collaborate with others, and they can grow small businesses. But they are just that. They're tools. They are not a substitution for human interaction. They can actually be sources of envy, of loneliness. Without knowing it, we are comparing ourselves to others. We can feel left out, we can feel inferior, we can feel like our lives aren't matching up to those who are traveling the world or who are in the perfect relationship. And this creates unrealistic expectations of who we are and who we're supposed to be and what our relationships should look like. And this can be stressful and harmful to our actual relationships. Studies have shown that the more time that is spent on Facebook, the lower our mood is immediately afterwards. And the more users consume others' personal information, the more likely they are to experience feelings of envy. But we are guilty of it too. We are not just the readers, but the writers. We craft each post to present ourselves in the best fashion. The filtered photos and carefully chosen words all create the version of ourselves that we want the world to see while likes and favorites and comments and shares validate the image that we posted, this image of ourselves, but they don't validate who we really are. And that notification can leave your brain in 30 seconds while a hug might be remembered for 30 years. Focusing on cultivating our online persona is a crutch and the expense is our real-life persona. It's skirting real-life interaction for an easier alternative, an alternative that can actually leave us feeling more disconnected than anything else. Social media allows us to reap the benefits of social interaction, but may make us feel more isolated as we replace our real-life conversations with virtual ones, so we feel lonelier, so we wait for that next notification. It's a never-ending cycle of distraction and isolation. So, what can we do? We don't need to stop using social media altogether, but we can be conscious of the fact that virtual life isn't the same as real life. We can watch what and how much we choose to post, but most importantly, it's up to us to disconnect from our computers and from our phones before we let them disconnect us from life. We need to stop being apart from things and start being a part of them. It's time for us to sit down to dinner with our friends and not our phones. It's time we laugh out loud instead of LOL. And it's time we start connecting with people instead of connecting to them.